The world is changing and that is our new reality. One phenomenon is climate change and its related social, agricultural and demographic implications that make it now a political issue. We can't keep producing and consuming the way we used to and therefore traditional financial tools are no longer enough to manage our client savings. After more than 20 years of globalization, rates reaching beyond zero and natural resources excessive consumption, we need to change old ways of investing and incorporate social and climate related aspects into our economic and financial scenario. For this, we needed to develop new tools and methodologies. And this is thanks to our integrated ESG research center that we now have the necessary toolbox behind our various carbon impact strategies. Specifically, to our carbon impact credit strategy, this graph illustrates what we call the carbon budget. Scientists have determined which amount of carbon can be emitted before atmospheric concentration translates into degrees of warming of plus one, two, plus seven degrees. This graph intends to show you that in 2014, we collectively produced 35 gigatons of carbon in the world. If we keep emitting at this rate, we are heading towards a plus five degrees warming scenario at the end of the century. The sharp sectorial decarbonization represents the two degrees scenario budget, which was the upper range of the Paris Agreement objective. Only four global industries make up 80% of total greenhouse gas emissions. This is where we really need to get involved and decarbonize. It is our strong conviction that we need to accompany those sectors into the transition as they will be the ones with the most impact. Financing the energy transition through every sector is key to our strategy. A company has different levels of emissions. Scope one, the direct emission that occur during production. Scope two, the indirect emissions that are linked to the type of energy used for lighting or heating. Scope three, are linked to the value chain and particularly the use of products. Therefore, the company has three levers to change things and reduce emissions. If we take the example of an auto manufacturer that emits 50 tons of CO2 per year for one car produced, if it doesn't change anything, next year will also result in 50 tons of CO2. However, what they can do is act on the different source of emissions. Scope one, they could invest in digitalization to be more energy efficient in the production process. Scope two, they could install solar panels on manufacturing sites. Scope three, they could invest into hybrid and electric vehicles that will induce less emission once on the road. Such investments in green technologies will reduce induced emission in the future. Therefore, from the initial 50 tons of CO2, the auto manufacturer can go down to 20 tons for the same car produced. The 30 ton difference between the two scenarios are the avoided emissions linked to those investments. Now that we've explained the global carbon budget available in order to achieve the two degrees objective, and to the micro level emissions linked to a company's activities, we'll reconcile the two into our pathway methodology. The pathway methodology is forward looking. The carbon emission trajectory involves different hypotheses, but has the advantage of putting individual green projects into perspective. We are looking here for real and transformative changes in companies we look at. For this, we aim for strong strategic vision from executive over how they want to shape the company in the future and remain competitive in a low carbon world. There is no unique way to decarbonization. Transformations are varied but mostly specific. Companies at the first stage of their decarbonization will change the way they work while others will go beyond this point and change the products they sell. A change in the company's culture should also be at the heart of the company's transition. All those approaches are unequal in terms of time horizon and ambitions, and this is our job to understand and measure them. Today, there are different degrees of transition, and in order to evaluate the performance, we compare current and future companies' emission to the 1.5 and 2 degrees reference scenario given by the International Energy Agency, by sector and by geography. The main work for us is to confront the long-term strategic objectives of a company with the investment it has done in the past or is doing right now, 
in order to understand if the decarbonization is achievable at this pace. Given the long-term outlook of our analysis, 2030, we include scenario analysis into the decarbonization pathways, which is why we will have a confidence corridor which upper and lower bands reflect our views. This will allow us to compare the company's future carbon intensity with the two degrees budget of its sector and understand if it's aligned with a plus 1.5 or a plus 5 degrees warming scenario. We then classify companies into groups depending on how they perform in the future carbon world. This will highlight the future decarbonization and disruptive stories we can then invest in.